The title of this one is called Are We Still Relevant from Trash Taste Highlights? Something is going down with Giguk and friends. What do they got to say? What are you still trying to prove to yourself? <laughs> Fuck me. Uh... I'm the real one. <laughs> that I'm the goat. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the goat. That's why I'm the goat. Oh. What am I still trying to prove to myself? Fine, that I can do anything I want. Yeah. Uh, genuinely. Genuinely, yeah. Honestly, okay. like if I put my mind to it, I can do anything. I just need to fucking whip myself into shape in order to do it in okay. reality. I'm still relevant. <laughs> that's that's that too close to home, God. <laughs> that I haven't fallen off yeah. yet. <laughs> this is just this. Has Giga not fallen off yet, guys? Listen, when I hear his fucking tier list, the seasonal tier list, part of me is like, you motherfucker, you watch Windbreaker. You call this shit an Oonga Boonga fight anime. That, that still will never. Oh, that makes me mad. But I think Giga is still on point. No, seriously, of course we're going to meme around with him watching anime in 2x speed because, you know, he needs to pump out his summaries for a different seasonal anime, but he's still pumping out regular content. I don't think he's really, quote unquote, fallen off. This is just YouTuber daily, daily life update. What do you see? <laughs> I'm trying to prove myself that I haven't fallen off, damn it. That's, that's the question to what's the hardest truth you had to face this past year. I'm well, still I'll, relevant, you know, I'll, I I'll, think. I'll be honest, I like, you said this question, nothing really comes to mind. Like, I think like, I, I would love to give an answer here, but mm. I genuinely don't think there's anything I am trying to prove yeah. to myself. Maybe I just don't know I am. Maybe, yeah, I, yeah, maybe subconsciously. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe I am maybe. subconsciously. What do I think about? Like, okay, what do you think I'm trying to prove to myself? One. Come on. What do you, what do I think you're yeah, trying yeah. to prove to yourself? Yeah, yeah. That he still got it? Like the gig from past decades? I don't know. Cause like once you have this, like, cause these people are way different from me where I'm like trying to prove to myself that I can make it. These people have already made it, have hit the ceiling of the success in their respective categories. Not saying they are the best, but they're definitely fucking huge, right? All three of them. So it's like a different game when you're up there of people wanting to see you fall down and you kind of losing passion and what you originally were doing and created that community and maybe those people suddenly start to go away as you start to try, try some other stuff. It's an, interesting, it's an interesting phenomenon with this content creation as you just grow and hit that success and then what? Yeah, yeah. You're like Come the on. chillest dude ever, guy. I don't think you're anything. Fuck. Anyway. Okay. I don't think you're that... trying to prove anything. <sighs> That you're the number one anti <laughs> <laughs> I think you're trying to prove that. Well, and you are succeeding, I will actually say. Kinda, uh, actually. Is Giguk the number one anti tuber? Probably, right? I mean, if we compare monthly viewership, maybe that is not the case because Giguk does not really pumping out content, right? But every video he uploads is, is just fucking unreal in terms of metrics. Everyone knows him of his seasonal anime breakdowns, right? He's, a, he's definitely a cult classic in the YouTube anime space. For sure he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Joey. Bro. Actually, Joey, um, I don't need to prove that since uh, you fucking quit the game, man. <laughs> you quit. Maybe if you stayed in the game, I would have some competition, Joey. God's <laughs> like, it's boring now, man. There's no, there's no one's even close to me right now. Bro, where's, uh, where's my... Get it. I'm coming. I'm coming for his ass. You know, you know why I came back to YouTube? Why my drive to become the number one was? Yeah. Because you existed, Joey. <laughs> I quit, went to the BBC, you came along, and then you decide to quit. I'm like, and you know what? I saw that, and the moment you passed me, I was like, my job is done. <laughs> <laughs> fades into fades away. I'm, I'm like, where's my rival in this now? <laughs> <laughs> like I never watched Anime Man content, but it sounds like before Giguk was huge, Anime Man was just absolutely huge, right? And then Giguk kind of took over. I don't know, man. Um, what isn't, am that, I isn't that sad though that it took him showing you it was possible? Oh, uh, why is that sad? Because you didn't believe in yourself. <laughs> That's what all the anime has been teaching you, Gone to always believe in yourself. True. And you did it until he Never believed in himself. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not about no, no, believing no, no. in I'm myself. Sorry. I'm it's, sorry that I misunderstand that it's you not, quit. It's not, it's not about believing in yourself. It's a, sometimes you just need, you, you should understand this best of all. Sometimes you just wow. need uh, someone to get competitive against to, uh, to you know, some, some friendly competition. What That's is, what, what other- I feel that. I feel that for sure, right? It's lonely at the top. I'm not saying I'm at the top, but Definitely, I'm not going to mention any names, nor do I think of them in bad light, but you know, there's definitely other reaction channels that's way bigger than me in terms of sub count and viewership 
and I look at them and I'm like, damn, what are they doing? You know, what am I doing wrong? And try to study and learn from them. And it's a healthy competition. It's, it's kind of like a one-sided rivalry all in my head, but it, it definitely does push you to grow when you have someone kind of in the same space doing something that you're also doing that is, you know, in the same level and you want to overcome them. Otherwise, so. how, where does your drive yeah, come from? Yeah, how do you improve? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's fair enough. Who are your rivals? My, my rivals. Rival. Your yeah. rival, yeah. your... Yeah. Your Nakama, uh, if you will. I guess what? if anyone would fall into the category, it would be Ludwig, but that's only yeah, because, yeah, I, yeah. but it's more of like a friendly competition. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's but, it. But there's a but, part but there's of you. But he's always beaten me. There's a part of you though, that is he like, beats me. He always beats me. but look, you gotta be honest. There's a part of you somewhere in the back of your head that's like, yes, he is, you know, he, he does a lot of things that I want to do that maybe oh. I see has him doing it better. But in the back of your head, you're like, I want to beat this better. guy one day. I'm not even beat, but. That's not a bad thing to think though. You know, straight up, when I first started this shit too, like it all started from, hmm, I see a bunch of dudes just screaming and yelling and saying nothing about the anime that I want to watch as a reaction. And I think I can do a better job. And I just fucking went out and did it. And even now I see other people and I see their content and they're succeeding. And I'm thinking to myself, it's like, I believe in myself and I think I can do a quote unquote better job. Now that's very subjective. Though. It's like, what the fuck does a better job mean, right? All I do is focus on just having fun. If I'm having fun, then the reactions will be fun and the people will then come around to it because it's just a fun experience. But it's like, I just like, it's fun to be competitive with someone. Keep yeah, you on yeah. your toes. Yeah, yeah it does. Exactly. It does. Yeah. And uh, I think that's good for, I guess. It kind of keeps both sides motivated and kind of keeps each other accountable and makes you want to grind harder and you kind of grow together. I think that's good for motivation. But he's uh, not like, yeah. look, look, so like, it's not a competition, right, chat? Chat? Why am I saying chat views? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, he's, he's got brain rock, no, bro. Fuck no, it. no, 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 it's rock. not a competition, but in your head you're like, chat. you're like, if he does something, I can do it better. Like, it's like a, like a, like when you're at the pub, you're like, nah, I can do it better though. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just kind of like a- I do not watch my own videos. Uh, well, sometimes I do. Lately, I don't really, because I'm just too busy just making videos more and more. Yeah, it's yeah. like a jovial. It's yeah. literally not like, don't take that as serious. I think it's cringe and someone's like, I'm competing against him. The other guy's like, what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which no, has happened, no, no, I've heard of that, where someone's yeah. like, yeah, we, uh, we, we compete against each other. And the other guy's like, no, we're not. <laughs> what are you talking about? No. One side of rivalry. No, but like, yeah, I, th I think there's a difference. Uh, there's a difference between two people it's saying, oh, we're competing, yeah, yeah, we're competing against each other to uh, something that's more subtle. That's yeah. like, uh, you know what? I just, I just want to do well. You know, yeah. I want to do yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. And I see what it's that a, person's a, doing. It's a competition with yourself and the person you are in the competition with is the goal. You know, or is- you're trying to continually better yourself. The competition at the end of the day is with your inner self to be your ideal self and perform better. But the goalpost is determined by that rival who's doing better than you. Yeah, that's good. Or yeah, maybe the, the real competition is with yourself, okay. Joey. I it like, is. I like, it like is with yourself. I like this. this? Uh, because it's like, why are you trying to prove to yourself? I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> that I'm the why are you trying to prove to yourself? Why not? Why not try something hard and do something that you believe in, create something and have that be accepted by an audience that also is, you know, enjoying that thing, right? I think that's life in a nutshell, like show and tell, elementary school, right? Human nature, at the end of the day, we, we long to want to be accepted. We long to be want to be acknowledged. Even if you say you don't care about other people's opinions about you, we are social irrational creatures and having these goals that we make out to better ourselves and to and for that to be then respected by peers that share the same interests, I think is very fulfilling. And I think that's one of the most important things in life. The goat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, um, I genuinely don't know. Am I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're trying to prove to yourself either. But you can, you can fucking do it. You can I, make I fucking sick clothing. I'm trying to prove to myself that whatever I put my mind to, I can, you can do it. Get, like, you know, get somewhere with. Yeah. True. It doesn't really have to be about making anime YouTube videos. It's just like a test that you have with yourself every day of, can I do this, right? It's really good when you set goals and you actually accomplish it and you build up confidence. It's just iterative process throughout life to keep building and building experience and proving to yourself that you can do this. It's a good positive feedback loop. I think. Yeah. I think it's like every challenge I decide to do and every challenge I actually actively participate in yeah. is something that I want to achieve and I want to do the best that I possibly can with it. Mm, but good. that doesn't necessarily mean that I failed if whatever I'm trying to achieve has failed. Yeah. It's more like every failure is a lesson. Of course, you're going to fail. You can't just get a win every time. 
But that failure is like part of the process of trying to get that success. You may fail 50 times, but that one success at the end, after you failed 50 times and learned each time from what to do better, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Using that as an opportunity to grow and learn from, and mm. then using that knowledge that you've gained from the success or the failure onto the next thing. Yeah, that's one of the best things you can do for yourself, right? Understanding what failure is and contextualizing it into like a learning lesson. Most people don't even want to try something because they know that they're going to fail and it feels bad to fail. But you got to realize that no one gives a fuck about that but yourself in the moment that you can like remove that from like a personal thing and be like, you know what? Like, I just don't have the skill set right now, but I'm going to learn and I'm going to do better over and over. Then you can actually move forward. And then another thing on the other spectrum is the moment that you like accept failure as like a thing as, oh, it's just all part of the process. Tee hee. But you just keep failing. At that point, now it's counterproductive. Now you're coping in your head thinking every failure is just a lesson. But if you're not learning from the lesson, you're repeating the every mistake every time. That is also just stupid. And just keep going on from there. That's as serious as this podcast is going to get. <laughs> Fuck. He said it so well. Um, said it great. That was great. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was good. I, 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 his answer. <laughs> I like that answer. Yeah, I'll, I like, I'll, I'll okay. take it. I'll, I'll pull, take pull it. the next one out. I'll, 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 I'll take it. I'll take All it. All right. All right. That should be our deepest episode, but something to our most unhinged episode. Yeah, you know, it kind of goes both ways. <laughs> yeah. Are you lying to yourself about anything? Yeah, I think everyone is lying to themselves about everything. For sure they are. We're constantly in a state of coping and the stuff that we want, and we know that sometimes it's not right or it's not good, but, you know, there's everybody has these things in their lives. That I'm falling. That I'm falling. That, that, <laughs> that I'm, re that I'm that relevant. relevant. That I'm relevant. <laughs> Ooh, I'm Ooh. lying to myself. Ooh, I mean, I'm, I'm I think, not even joking, by the way. I think, I think the problem with this Shut is that up. <laughs> you are joking. No, you Shut are the joking. fuck up. I think I'm lying to myself when I say that I'm the React Messiah. Because I'm not. But that's a persona that I'm creating where I want to give a fuck about the anime reactions I'm doing and create content for the audience that aligns with my interests that actually wants more commentary and breakdown of the episodes and by propping myself up as a self-proclaimed trashy isekai king or react messiah I eventually do become one all throughout my life I don't there's like this destination but I don't get there immediately but I'll put up a facade and I'll delude myself into believing my own lies until that lie becomes reality. Because if I don't have the audacity to claim such things and lie to myself, the lying part is honestly just me wanting to believe in myself. But I know that's not the case yet. It's kind of like in Beyblade where fucking Masamune Kadoya says, I'm number one, I'm number one. Motherfucker, you ain't number one. But it's all about that desire to be that thing and hyping yourself to be that thing, and if you can manage it in a well, a good way, I think it is productive. Okay. Nah, I'm not. Why? <laughs> you Why? don't think you're the goat. No, 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 that I'm falling off. What do you mean, what do you mean? That I'm relevant. What do you mean? But what, is, what does relevancy really mean, right? That you're falling off. Just fucking monthly viewership on YouTube? The amount of money you're making? What kind of like metrics do you determine that? Just social perception on Twitter? Like what? Hey, so I'm lying to myself that I'm still relevant. Oh, so you're uh, saying oh. you genuinely, like, deep down, don't feel like you're relevant? No. But, like, does... I think that Anime Man is irrelevant in terms of the core audience that he created by doing anime content, but he's moved away from that. And now he has the second channel, Joey Bissinger, where he's talking about, like, more uh, broad stuff about Japanese culture. And those videos I find very fascinating. So that's a separate, you know, audience that he's cult like cultivating. But in terms of, like... Where he was in his former glory, in the peak that he was, for sure, the metrics definitely has fallen off, I'm assuming. But I don't necessarily think that that means he's irrelevant. It just means he's pivoting careers. I'm lying to myself that I'm still relevant. Oh, so you're uh, saying oh. you genuinely, like, deep down, don't feel like you're relevant? No. But, like, does that matter? No. You're, 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 <laughs> no, it doesn't. But, like, I what mean, is... What I think that it does and it doesn't. It, it, it depends on how you take it, right? When you have a stupid like 12 year old kid typing on YouTube comments saying, huh, 30 seconds after upload, only 12 views, bro fell off, L. Like, does that matter? No. But if you actually believe in that shit, if you actually think that you fell off and it eats away in your head, I guess it does matter. It's all about public perception and you defining who you are, what kind of person you are, 
and not caving in to like public perception. What does relevant what mean does in relevant this context? Mean? Like, yeah. what do you mean by that? Relevant mean, well, I guess- Like you're like the top, like, okay, let me rephrase I, it. I wasn't- Like, you're, you're not at the top of your game? I'm, no, 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 it's not even that. It's that I'm not as- The guy is to be. Uh, how, do I, how do I explain it? In terms Probably it's just, again, just like peak anime man versus Joey Basinger now. In terms of like myself being, yeah. you know, the best that I could be with whatever it is that I'm doing, I yeah. think I'm- I'm I'm in it more than I've ever been. Yeah, yeah. Right, like I'm I'm putting way more effort into whatever it is that I'm doing now than yeah. I have ever been in my career. But in terms of like YouTube relevancy mm -hmm. or like social media relevancy, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm as relevant as I used to be. Yeah, and that's just an objective fact, right? An anime man, right? It's huge, huge brand, but now he's moving away from that, doing more things, and I think that's even more fulfilling. And I don't think that he's quote unquote fallen off or he's irrelevant. To the core audience that watches old content, maybe he's irrelevant. But to the new audience that he's building up and continues to grow, that's completely relevant. That's just how I see it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, but I'm not. But I wouldn't but really. Like you, I but I wouldn't even say I'm lying to myself about that because I'm aware of it. But also, then I think like are we all. I think we all are on less of a YouTube grind. Yes. Yeah. Like you, like you just upload less. Which yeah. even yeah. by that fact, yeah, these fucking lazy fuckers, bro. I'm out here fucking pumping out 10 videos a fucking day. Yes, they're lazy reaction content, but I'm still out here. Still doing it. Eight hour streams every day. These motherfuckers, dude, they get big. They realize that they can get away with like pump, putting out less content. That's what happens to every successful content creator. And y'all should hold me accountable for that too in the future. I don't know. Maybe I'd ban you for calling me out in the future. I'm not sure, but there is a pattern of behavior of like when you're first starting out, there's this drive, the passion, the ego to prove yourself, to just get on that grind. And at a certain point, you know, once the pedal is off the metal, it's just like, it kind of just less content, less enthusiastic, still getting enough views to, you know, make a lot of money, but the core passion is gone and you can kind of tell. Factor would be like, all right, I mean like- Yeah, for sure. So I think if you were doing weekly and you were stay, I'm, but you know, you still have the, I don't think that's fair necessarily. I think it's just changed. Yeah. Also at the same time though, I don't really care that I'm not as quote unquote relevant yeah. as that's I used good. to be because I don't put my self-worth into my success. Relevancy is mm. a myth. I don't put my self-worth to my success. This is a very profound line he just said here. Success. Relevancy is a myth. Yeah. Also at the same time though, yeah. I don't really care that I'm not as quote unquote relevant yeah. as I used to be because I don't put my self-worth into my success. Now, I wonder if he's lying to himself there because it's really hard to do that, right? Like for example, even if you're not doing content, if you're just like, you know, participating in regular jobs, when you're unemployed, you feel really shitty about yourself because society has taught you that your value as a person is tied into the amount of value you can create in this capitalist society to have a good job, to get a good education, to have a good job, a good career, right? Once you're unemployed, you feel really shitty. Even though that doesn't mean you're a bad person. You could have been laid off. You could have been uh, the victim of shitty fucking management in the workforce. People overhired. They had to let people go. Doesn't mean that you're a bad person, but your perception, again, your success is tied in with that job. So you're going to feel shitty about yourself. So it's really hard to like dissociate or like separate yourself, your self of identity from the content. If my YouTube content did bad, for sure I'd feel worse about myself because now it's just like this feedback of, huh, seems like I am less entertaining. Maybe I am being more lazy with the content strategy. Maybe I'm not in tune with my audience. Therefore, I'm doing something bad. Therefore, the numbers are bad. But if you can kind of like separate that shit and be like, I know myself, I am more than just a content creator or the job that defines me, right? I, I am this person that, you know, I don't know, does A, A, B, C. I don't fucking know what hobbies you enjoy. But if you can like have a sense of self outside of something that makes you money, then for sure you can definitely reach this like enlightened state. I think that's pretty healthy. Heaven sees a myth. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, God. <laughs> look, look, look. So like, did, this, my... did someone lace this man's beer or okay, something? No, okay. <laughs> it's like, not the same. It's like, look, I, I think that like, uh, occasionally we get comments that are like, man, these guys are falling off, they get less views. Oh, no. like, this motherfucker has been playing with the Rubik's Cube for the last seven fucking minutes and 38 seconds and still hasn't progressed. We get comments that are like, man, these guys are falling off, they get less views. And oh, no, like, I don't give a fuck about those. That, what about fate? Of course I feel bad about Fate Zero, right? It's performing bad. 
but I also know that I am putting in a lot of effort for the Fate Zero reactions, just as much, I'd say, compared to the ReZero reactions. It's just there's not as much to get kind of crazy theorize about in terms of the actual watch time. But I think that the product still stands for itself. It's just simply that my audience is more of an isekai audience, and the Fate Zero audience, it just there's not much overlap with the audience that enjoys the other content. So by understanding why the numbers are the way they are, and understanding that it's not as if this product is bad compared to the other product I'm putting out, I can now contextualize, hmm, okay, Fate Zero performing worse than fucking Slime Diaries. It's expected. I understand why it's happening. Let's just move on and go from there. Yeah, by that kind of like metric, yes, we are like less relevant than we were, sure. but I also think that Trash Taste is in the healthiest spot, healthiest place it's been mm -hmm. because the it's the most consistent and we yeah. all feel like it's in a great, like there was a point where Trash Taste was a lot. Yeah. We mm -hmm. were doing way too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously the fans loved it. Yep. But we were like, shit, <laughs> yeah. this is a lot to balance. I mean, also in the in the sense of like YouTube relevancy, I guess, yeah. whether it be with Trash Taste or with my own personal things, it's yeah. like, I'm not as like, sad or disappointed if I'm not as relevant as I used to be or if I you know if the the trajectory keeps going down because I can't because your new trajectory no matter how much you fall off is still gonna be way better than 99% of the society because like come on like, like these dudes falling off right Giga Connor Joey them falling off is still a position most people will never even get to most people never even got on there, you know? So when people make fun of their fall off, they're still so much better at life in terms of creating like monetary value to participate in the society than anyone else would be. So I guess there's that going on. And after that, right? After the money talk is gone, then it's all about like ego and like how much pull you have, how much clout you have, and how much like, I guess you value that as part of your identity. Came into this knowing fully well that I wasn't going to be relevant for the rest of my life anyway. Like yeah. eventually yeah. me, these guys, everybody is going to fall off. That's just, yeah, that's everything in life, right? Nothing is forever. Everything is temporary. Things will fall off and new things will start again. That's just a natural course. And having this toxic way of clinging on to things just because you're scared of change is not helpful either. How mm. the world works. And I think that's why like, I'm not as like, sad or like disappointed at myself of the fact that I'm not as relevant as I used to mm. be because it's like, oh, this is just how things go. And it's really? like, and, and you know, if it is going to keep going down, then like, I'm just going to fucking make the best of it and just enjoy it while lost. All right. And then I'll be able to get out of that with no regrets. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, I was actually serious in my answer. I, I, I do think relevancy is a myth. I think yeah. uh, the best, it's the best, the, the best, <laughs> Thing I think uh, I I think especially in our industry when you get to like I guess a certain point mm. is that uh, I think Lily, it was Lily Pichu that says relevancy can come in waves. Yep. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, totally. yeah. Which which it totally can. Mm. Uh, in waves, as in there's like these trends that's like outside your control, and sometimes you just pop off with a new anime, new title, new content that's again just outside your control. Sure. Uh, sometimes you just don't like don't have the energy or don't have sure, the drive. Engage, yeah. to don't have the energy. Don't have the drive. I'm a little black pilled about this. I have no fucking pity for anyone that complains about how tired they are for content creation. I make a living by watching anime videos. There is nothing that I should be ever fucking complaining about other than fucking retard monkeys making me upset in chat because they're being stupid. When people talk about lack of motivation and they start crying on their YouTube videos, I'm like, oh, guys, I've just been so sick and I, so many things are happening in my life. I'm so sorry. Oh, woe is me. It's just like, shut the fuck up. Just put out the good content. Just make the content and move on. I don't ever want to tie in my personal life and my personal problems with you guys because you guys are watching to be entertained. No one wants to hear another person's fucking problems to have their emotional baggage when you have already suffered throughout your day and you're trying to find some uh, sanctuary by watching some contents to distract yourself from the just shitty part of life, right? So whenever I see content creators just like crying about that shit, I know as a viewer that it's not going to help. Some people will say that they, they care, right? But most people are just tuned out and they'll think that you're even entitled to, so... Complain about that shit is never good. But now that's kind of toxic, right? To say like, oh, you should never fucking cry. That you should never, you know, voice your pains and troubles. But in terms of like having a professional image as your brand, I don't know. It's it just to me, 
I will never put my personal life or problems out there unless it's like a fucking emergency of like, oh shit, guys, like I fucking broke my leg, I broke my arm, I got super sick, I can't even talk right, then of course I'm gonna let you know, but for the most part, I just think the content is where it all begins and where it all ends. People don't give a fuck about your personal life situations, just make the content, then just move on. Sure do the grind set to mm. be able to be one of those people that people constantly talk about or yeah doing because yeah, you, you've got to put yourself out there to keep doing that yeah it's yeah, not yeah. always what exactly. aligns with what you're doing right now it's yeah, tough yeah. man and yeah. you're also like fucking trying to manage a clothing company so yeah. like <laughs> yeah yeah no shit you got less energy for this <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah uh like, a, like just because you're not as relevant in one field doesn't yeah. mean you can't be more relevant in other fields. Yeah, true. Know? I think true. the biggest thing that I want to avoid is just not doing anything. Yeah, you know, or like half-assing everything. You know, yeah, that's the one thing. Half-assing everything. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. Um, that does feel bad though. When it's like, you ever watch like people for the original content that you enjoy, but later on you kind of see like they lose the passion on their content. It just actually feels like a labor of not love anymore but like the best example is instead of like a doga kobo oshinoko you're getting like a fucking failure frame of tower of god you know <laughs> and it's like oh it, it, now it looks like they're just they're not even happy doing what they're doing the content is just fucking mid and it's just even worse then maybe that is a good time to just like stop and just like rethink about what you're doing and move on how do i feel about youtubers who retire compared to youtubers who are just lazy i mean at the end of the day it is not up to me to like judge others and like whether this is good or this is bad if people are retiring sure move on with your life right they got they've done their thing they got their money from youtube now they're going to do something else with their life if youtubers are just lazy i mean you reap what you sow right i'm sure they have different reasons why they're lazy whether it be depression lack of motivation family circumstances life right all that shit sure these are all personal problems that definitely um are valid but my angle at this is that the common viewer does not give a fuck about this. And if you cry to them about your problems, nothing good will ever happen from that. And all that matters is that you make the content that people know you for. And if you can continuously do that, just separate your, pers your, your personal shit, separate all that bullshit. Only thing that matters is the content, entertain. And if you can just fixate and focus on that, everything else will settle itself. But again, the moment you start bringing your personal baggage into the content, you try to make excuses as to why things are slow uploads, things are blah, blah, blah. That's when the audience seems to kind of tune out, in my opinion, of not only doing content creation for myself, but also looking at other people's content creation careers, whether they succeeded or they fell off. There's actually a funny example in my old channel, my old channel, not this channel, the old channel where I had no idea what I was doing with YouTube. I was pumping out random fucking anime reactions every fucking weekly seasonal that exists just because I thought that's how you get views. Turns out that's not how you get views. And I was very depressed at a certain point to the point where I even made a fucking video complaining about like, oh my God, you guys don't care about this and blah, blah, blah. My, my life is blah, blah, blah. And guess what? Complaining and crying? You think people care? You think people are gonna pity you? People unsub. People think, what a fucking loser. You really gonna fucking cry when you're watching just anime, you're just making anime reactions on YouTube? Like, at that point, I was like, yeah, this is a fucking stupid thing I did. And I was like, you know what? None of this fucking shit matters. Just put your head down, grind, and entertain. That's all that matters. <clears throat> Sometimes you need a project that you don't care about. It's not all about how many eyeballs are on a certain project. Sometimes mm. you need passion projects. Sometimes you need to do different things. Yeah. Mm. And it's not all about the social media numbers at a point. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And I think it's about personal fulfillment. If you're just an empty ghoul chasing after views on social media, then you're just gonna become hollow, right? You gotta do sometimes what you want to do out of these passion projects. Like I said, yeah, relevancy is a myth because <clears throat> and once you get to a point where you have a certain stable enough career, Income, when you yeah. can call it a career, everything else is just bullshit. Everything. Yeah. So instead of making five million dollars a year, you know, you're making four million dollars a year. Oh no, Kikuk's gonna go fucking broke, right? I'm not saying these numbers are real, but at a certain point, right, the numbers don't really matter as much for these people at the very top, and it's all about personal fulfillment by pursuing things that you actually want to do rather than being forced to con constantly pump out content that you feel like you need to do, you know? At that point, that's just a fucking job, right? Everything yeah. else is just like, oh, who's who's the hot topic of the day today? Yeah. Who is uh, who's everyone talking about? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that you know? changes all the fucking yeah. time.
And even this video that I'm reacting to right now, I know for a fact that this video is not going to do well on YouTube, right? Most of the fucking monkeys watching my content don't care about this kind of philosophical business kind of talk about like mentality that goes into like performance and stuff like that. Building out a career, building out a like, business strategy, blah, blah, blah. It's more for me because like I'm fascinated about this kind of topic and I want to understand like the minds of these people talking about it. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that comes and goes. Totally. Depend especially on the internet age where the conversation shifts so quickly mm -hmm. that you can do like the biggest fucking event that anyone has ever heard of in a in a week everyone will already have forgotten about it yeah True. you know for so, better or worse too. yeah for better or worse <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so it's coming mm. to terms with that really what, what are you lying to yourself about what am i lying to myself about that watching anime in two times speed is actually productive and a good thing for you giga stop it please stop it just i want you to consume the anime that you actually care about and give your honest takes rather than short fucking takes that may be misinformed and pisses me off during the fucking tier list like the Windbreaker. I will never let go of Windbreaker. <laughs> He's too honest for um, himself. I don't this know. guy is too honest yeah. for himself. I, I feel like I'm pretty self-aware. He's uh, too content. With I'm, I'm, not, I'm not content. I, I'm, I'm very actually- You're very self You're very self-aware. I'm, I'm actually like almost never content with myself. I'm always on like a half mm. to like self-improvement, self- Oh, for sure, yeah. Self that's kind of like me too. I think that I'm pretty self-aware of my position in life. I understand my shortcomings. I understand what I'm kind of good at. But that does sound very narcissistic. And I think that I am a pretty narcissistic person. But at the end of the day, it's about balancing like your own self-love and wanting to improve yourself. And because I hold myself in such a high standard, I'm always constantly pushing myself to do better, but I fall short because I'm very incompetent at stuff. It's just this, my superpower is this like feedback loop of, I have a very high bar that I set for myself, but no matter how hard I try, I never really quite get there. But at the very least, I'll have reached a little bit be below that and still a better position than where I started at. And it's just continuous iterative process of this ego that drives me to do better, but I never get that. But then it pushes me to want more and more and more. Betterment, so contentment. Uh, I think is a dangerous thing because mm. sometimes people can be too content. Yeah, there's a balance with it, right? Like if you're too content, you get complacent. If you're always happy, then you're never happy, right? You got to kind of like push yourself to be uncomfortable at times. Sometimes there is a right comfort zone, but if you kind of like dwindle during that comfort zone, years of your life just immediately disappear and you ask yourself, what the fuck did I do with my life? And you'll regret it. So always trying to pursue something new or something better that you're already doing and trying to put yourself into these uncomfortable positions to learn and better yourself, I think is the true like growth of life. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Too comfortable, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. People, can, people can get too comfortable. But uh, I don't know, whenever I try, whenever I catch myself in a lie or try to be like self, like catch myself thinking something, it, it reflects on me a lot mm. and uh, I try to change that aspect of my life. Yeah, mm. yeah. I don't, I'm trying not to give a cop out answer, but I genuinely don't know because because yeah. <laughs> I try to be as self aware as possible. Yeah, just being honest with yourself. I <laughs> I think that the um, self aware part kind of goes hand to hand with me and anime reaction content, especially the formatting, because like before uh, this year January, right? If you look at my old videos, the anime reactions I never actually paused to actually give a take because I thought that people um, that pause. I thought people would get upset at it. And there was a person that complained like, bro, you're missing so much of the fucking content. You're not even pausing. Please, can you just pause? And there was a part of me that got mad and was like, fuck you, monkey bear. But then I was like, wait, wait. Maybe he's onto something, you know? Sometimes, yes, the pride and the ego is there. But you need to catch yourself and understand, maybe this is actually the right thing to do. And then I tried something new. And then... My content strategy changed. Now I'm able to make content, fully pausing and give my entire takes and breakdowns and fully analyze and really, it strengthened my skill set, right? Because I was already a yapper, but yapping over the anime while it's playing, you're not getting everything, you know? So at that point, I was like, put the ego aside. Your watchers are literally telling you that this is what they want, at least experiment, right? Now, I'm not saying every fucking comment that nitpicks at the content is a good criticism, but there are times when you have to really sit back and think. Think of like, hmm, you know what? Maybe this is the pain point for my clients, right? How did this all fucking start with? Because I was an anime reaction watcher. And my pain point was that these motherfuckers never talked about the animes that I cared about. That's why I offered a solution to that. But now my solution has new pain points. 
my clients are saying, you're missing shit, bro. You can do better. And at that point, do I let my ego take over and say, fuck you? Sometimes I'll make the mistake of doing that. But sometimes you need to capture yourself in the heat of the moment. Humble yourself and think, you know what? Maybe you're onto something. Let's try something different. And I think that's definitely been one of the best things I could have done for myself. I think is the healthiest thing you can do for yourself. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah. Like, you know, what's that Kurt Cobain quote? It's like, I'd rather be hated for who I am than to be loved for who I'm not. <laughs> oh, like, put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> it's on a million t-shirts. That's just pretty profound. And I'm sure a lot of people feel suffocated with their day-to-day -day lives because they have to fake this persona. They have to like be someone that they're not for the sake of internet money because that's what the brand that they've created is and they can no longer, you know, they, and like they can't even be themselves. If the mask falls off, people will call them a fraud, right? Like that's why I am so honest and brutally raw with my takes because I will never bend or conform to the masses' opinions just because I think that they're right. And you know what? If that means that I'm wrong, sure. I'm wrong. I had the wrong opinion, but I'll at least still be true to myself. The moment you're like worried, like there's a lot of people where people like um no longer have their own opinions, but they are now the slave of their chat. If they say something, they're 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 scared that their chat's gonna turn on them. And now their entire opinion doesn't fucking exist. It's just whimsical bending to the chat's rules. And I'm like, that's not something that I want to be. It sounds such like a, it sounds like a fucking jail that you just put yourself into. So it's, I'm always going to be myself and be like who I am. Therefore, I will never be scared of having like a mask off moment because there is always a mask off moment. That's who I am, right? There is no persona. It's just obviously my, my personality is exaggerated from like a fucking six or seven out of 10 in a day-to-day -day basis in public to like a fucking 15 out of 10 for the camera, right? But still, it is at the core, still me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think I definitely lied to myself about having enough time for everything. Oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, man, I can definitely do all this stuff. Yeah, it's like, Constantly. you look, you look at the week's know, schedule yeah. and you're like, oh and I know yeah, I, I can probably do that. Yeah, yeah. I think, it's the thing I'm worst at is that I'm like, yeah, I can definitely do all this stuff. Time I'm management? Like, yeah, I don't think I can. Yeah. But I still try. Yeah. But I keep trying, which is the bad thing. I should just cut down some stuff. But I'm <laughs> very reluctant to do it. And Yeah, it's important to make... To like, uh, it has now been 12 minutes and Giga is still working on the Rubik's Cube and there's no progress on any of the sides. Other aspects of my life suffering. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's important to make sacrifices, you know? That if, if Especially yeah. if you need it, right? Like... Yeah, I mean, like, you know, when I started Nonsense, I had to sacrifice my Twitch career, <coughs> essentially, or what little there was of it, because <laughs> I was just like, I can't do both No, I mean, it's, uh, streaming is very time yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I, it, regarding taking too much out, I think that Patreon exclusive series for us is definitely that, right? I saw a recent comment on my server from a paying members. Someone was talking about Chinibio, because that's the new Patreon exclusive we're going to start. It's been almost two weeks since that poll went up and someone said like Patreon exclusives are a scam. And at that point I was like, you know what? You're not really wrong, right? It's, it's, it's just definitely not been a priority. I already fucked up taking too much to bite from Akame Got Kill and Code Geass at the same time. Then a completely new audience showed up to Patreon due to ReZero. And now it's just like shit. I'm not even, you know, making enough content for a comic got kill and code yes at the same time. I scheduled it wrong and the new people don't want it. So I've reset the entire thing. I, I, I flushed it. And I said, I'm sorry. All right, we're going to go with the new thing. I promise. We are actually going to watch Chunibyo on Tuesday, though. I, I, oh, I will promise you that. And these Patreon exclusives will be not a daily thing, but hopefully like three episodes roughly per week so that every month we can finish. If a season is like 12 episodes, something like that to keep it cycling. Wow. All right. We're getting deep. All right. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. What instantly makes someone a better person in your eyes? What instantly makes someone a better person? If like a dog likes that person, I feel like animals have a good vibe. Just like an instinct check. Besides that, if you're out in public, let's say you're at like a fucking restaurant, how people treat servers or minimum wage workers or other people in these service jobs. That really tells what kind of person they are. Some people are so fucking just toxic and they feel so elite, even though you're literally the same working class, that they treat other people in those service jobs like trash. And that shit just always irks me. 
beyond those things, I feel like a person that's always trying their best, it, it, it is um, inspiring to see someone struggle and try their best no matter what and doesn't give up. That's another thing. You fuck bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Massive cock. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, instantly a better person. What instantly makes someone a better person in your eyes? Instantly. If they sub to my Patreon, the Kaka Plus tier. I'm kidding. Ooh, we talking like little thing or like big, like philosophical big thing, anything, little thing. anything, anything you can think of. Um. Ah, uh, fuck, man, this is odd. Instantly, what? Sorry. What makes what instantly makes someone a better person in your eyes? A better person. I don't know, give like a cop out answer. I feel most of these are gonna be cop out answers. I just, this like, is like, I just, I'm just trying to think because it, yeah. you kind of realize when you're talking about deep questions, a lot of times the most generic advice is the correct advice. Yeah. It's the, it's the advice you've Probably heard. why it's been said the most. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? You realize, oh shit. That advice have like they have a point with yeah. that quote. Even though I've heard it a million fucking times yeah. before. Be a good person, be a selfless person. Yeah. Um There's like a very little thing that I really appreciate. Mm. If like you join a conversation and then like just one, one guy's like, all right, I, I'll I'll introduce everyone real quick. Oh yeah. Sometimes yeah, yeah. people don't do it, and I'm okay. like, damn. When someone does that, it's like, okay, you thought about like everyone and how they feel. Yeah. Yeah. That or like in public, like people's like self awareness of like where they're in a fucking grocery aisle that someone is behind them and they're aware of the spatial awareness. Like stuff like that actually doesn't exist that much in, in, in public, I've noticed. There's so many stupid people that just like fucking have no spatial awareness. There's, there's no fucking common mannerisms. They're so fucking rude. They're a fucking slob. They don't think about others. Like that shit pisses me off too. Because yeah. you really wanted to make sure everyone's having One thing I really like from a person, which I also try and do myself, is when you're in a group conversation and there's a particular topic that has been talked about and maybe that person doesn't really fully understand the topic at hand. But they want to learn. Maybe because of a lack of knowledge or maybe just because they've never heard of it before. But they want to mm -hmm. learn it. One quality that I really like in a person is when they're just not afraid to just like ask questions. Yeah, absolutely. Some people are just so scared about being perceived as an idiot, but if you just go in with the honest intent of I'm ignorant in this, you know, domain of topic, but can you please teach me? And having being that humble person that's always open minded is a good thing. Like that's yeah, something yeah. I really like where it's like you don't pretend to like fit in. You don't pretend to like know or anything yeah, like that. Like, just just being like, I admit, I don't know what you're talking about or I don't know yeah. to the extent that you guys are talking about. Mm. But by asking a question, I want to know more about it. Yeah, it shows a person's earnesty. They're very honest, right? They're very they're trying to be genuine and it seems very humble at the same time. And I'm showing that I am invested in knowing more about it. And I think that's a really, that's a, that's a really good like conversation trick that I've learned over the years of just like, it's, it's okay if you're dumb about a particular topic because you're not supposed to know <coughs> everything about everything. Yeah, you not being aware of a topic just because you didn't learn doesn't mean you're dumb. It just means that you're ignorant, right? And that's perfectly fine. It's just being open-minded to actually learn on top of that is what's good. Now, if you're fucking, dumb and you act as if you know about a topic now you're just a shitty person so by actively asking questions and trying to know and trying to understand is a quality that a lot of people like mm -hmm. yeah um so yeah if, if if you can do that in like it's also a very good conversation starter like he said right if you feel kind of awkward about something one of the best things to do in a public setting if you're feeling awkward like if it's like a new people you're talking to is make them talk about themselves that's what i've learned don't be the focus of attention. Be the person that mediates and drives the conversation through other people's actions. Make the other party feel good about themselves. Make them talk about themselves because at the end of the day, people want their ego stoked. And I realized that if I do that, I can get a lot more information out of other people. I can understand what they're all about. Then I can start to manipulate them and use them as tools because I know their incentives. I did not really mean that last part. Like a, a group conversation or even a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I think in most people's eyes, that's something that will instantly get you to like them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one quality that I'm trying to get better at, which I think makes people a, be a better person, mm. it's just, I've always appreciated people who notice like the little details or think about the mm. little details, like- mm. Like A1 pictures, fucking drawing background characters. And I noticed that little detail for half a frame. For example, um, I've never really cared if someone like 
knows when my birthday is mm. or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, you know me what too. I mean? Yeah. Uh, I've never really cared, but I really appreciate the people who are just like, oh. This no, I think that this does work. It's just that your specific example is that your boss is a fucking asshole. And we're talking about a social setting. And you may have actually asked a question that hasn't been asked before. If a person gets mad because they because you want to learn, it doesn't mean that you're bad. It means that that person's a fucking shitty person. This part, my friend has a birthday on this day, and I wanna wanna plan something for yeah, them, yeah. you know. And that's something that I'm like, holy shit, I'm very bad at that. Yeah, 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 yeah right, same, right. That's that's such same. a small thing that I'm like, holy shit, you are like five universes ahead of me. I do not know how you're able to do this, but whenever someone does it to me, even if I don't care if no one does it or yeah. if no one like notices. It's, it's nice that you feel appreciated that someone went out of their way to organize such a thing. For sure, there's a person in our friend group that's always organizing like get togethers and dinners, even though no everyone else is pretty much checked out and she's always trying to make sure that everyone's like accommodated and ready. I do really appreciate that. If it's my birthday, I really appreciate it yeah. when uh, someone does remember. I even appreciate someone... just people like sending me a, a personal line message on my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Me too. yeah. yeah. You know? yeah same it's way. like as much as it's nice to like go on social media and stuff like yeah. that and be like, yo, happy birthday or whatever. Like when it's just like a private message that only that person and me are going to read, I'm yeah. just like, you, hey, you know what? He's like, do you sometimes forget how old you are? Yeah. Have you gone to that age yet? Yeah. Sometimes the other day I was like, you're not even 30 yet. Am I I'm not. I. Connor's not 30 yet? Oh, I thought he was. It's not even I'm, I'm, not, I'm not yet because next month I'll be 30. <laughs> <laughs> so I know fully. So Gigguk is the oldest one. Gigguk is what, like 32, 33 or something? Anime Man is about to turn 30. Connor's like 28, 29. Yeah. Well, how old it's, I it's am? It's not a count well, up. He's 30 like, next month? I'm 30 next yeah. month. Oh, actually, old, by old. the time this, when does this episode come out? <laughs> Bro, forget, the big forget birthday, you don't remember, you remember his age. This episode I don't, out. I don't. I Wait, this how old am I, how old am I? Actually, I think this episode how, how comes out. How old am I? You're 32. <laughs> you guys no, he's 34. Yeah. She's 34? Shit. Oh, damn. I never thought about how old he really was. Damn. I, I don't know, Connor looked pretty old to me, but I guess that's because of his facial hair. You're fucking old, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm close. I'm, I'm almost mid 30, man. <laughs> You're mid 30? That's great. Mid 30? What? Are he go I wonder if he's still going to make those anime fucking seasonal videos when he's 40, man. Yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> okay, so this comes out on the 21st, right? I next think you were next like week will be my birthday. Yeah. He is like Rick, Nick, Rick Gladiator, but the difference is that he actually kind of. when. <laughs> When people say that 40 something year old man, it actually kind of like makes sense for Gigguk. Rick is like, what, 32 or some shit? You know, Gigguk's one away from rounding up to 4 0. <laughs> Wait, what? I thought like God was only like five years old. Right? <laughs> I was just losing his mind. And he's just like. I, I genuinely thought yeah, God was 1990, bro. Yeah, 1990. That makes, that makes it easy. 90s, yeah. baby. I the towers. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I'm, no, I, no, I get it though. Because like a few years ago when I was like 26 to 28, I was I like, I kept know, forgetting. Man. I was like, am I 26, 27? I don't know. Yeah, doesn't but matter. like the closer you get to 30, it doesn't become, your birthday doesn't become a count up. It's a countdown. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's how you remember. <laughs> Every birthday, you're like, oh no. I, I, there's two different mindsets, right? People who think another year has passed, what is there to celebrate? I'm one year closer to my death. There's a lot of those people for sure. And I think I was definitely one of those people until I kind of switched my mindset of another year has passed. I've accomplished these many things. I've bettered myself and I'm in a better position than I was one year ago. I can't wait for the next year. That's the mindset that I have now, which I think is a lot more helpful. <laughs> it's like, I'm not 30, I am 60 years to go. Yeah. Hopefully. 60 days to 32 months to You want to live till 90? That'd be nice. No. If I'm mobile enough at 90. Do you really want to live when you're 90 though? It depends on what kind of health state you are in. If you're just constantly suffering and barely existing at 90, but you just want to cling on to life, I don't think that's really good. I'd much die at like 50 or 60 while being healthy and fulfilled than fucking live to like 90 where I can't do anything. My entire existence is painful. That's a nightmare. Any? That's the big if. That's the big if. <laughs> How yeah. many 90-year-olds do you know that are mobile? Uh, my grandparents were. There's a lot of people in Japan actually that are like 90 plus years old that's still working. I think, it, I don't know if it's like a sad or a, it, it's, it's, it's sad to see super old people just bent over and just work really hard every day. But on the other side, Many of those people feel fulfilled because of the craft that they've dedicated themselves into. So even if I look at a slave wagery, to them it's their source of fulfillment and the thing that keeps them in health and keeps them going throughout life.
Do you think it just, ha- it just it just magically comes to you? Hey, man, I'm related to them. <laughs> It could be a proof of strength, but it could also be a proof that our social society system, that like a social security that has failed, you know, like for sure. I understand that there is like a proof of strength of these old people still working. But on the other hand, a part of me is like, damn, the government must have fucked up so hard that these people can't be retired and living their golden years in comfort and peace. I don't know. It, it's probably somewhere in between. <laughs> I, have a, I have a good chance. <laughs> Genetically, I might have I a good don't, chance. Joey. I do not want to make it to 19. I'm really praying my Japanese side pulls through <laughs> and that I live for a long time. Yeah, got, you got the white family tree though. What's, oh. the, what's the, uh, what's the- uh, Bro, age 60, it's all downhill. <laughs> Big downhill from 60. Hey, we, I, have, we got, I, I have a 50% chance I'll be there as well. We, so. got, we got the Asian blood, man. Like, no, uh, it's a gamble for me, bro. It's a, it's literally a coin toss. Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. At eight, it's, it's. All right, pull the next actually, one. Actually, 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 shit. Superior. It's genetic. literally no, like, actually all the men in my family have died earlier than the, <laughs> than the women. If I was, if I was a girl, I'd be like, yo, ninety at least. For me, at age sixty, it's gonna be like a fear and hunger coin toss. It's like yeah. I either just straight up die. <laughs> or I, 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 I think that's pretty much it for this trash taste clip and. I just saw this title and thought it was an interesting title called, you know, Are We Still Relevant, right? Because, like, I know that this kind of topics many people won't care about, but some people might talk, care about, you know, more of the, like, philosophical elements of just life and what goes behind in our mindset for content creation. But that's pretty much it. Are we still relevant? I think so. Here's the link. Please go give them a check out their podcast and Trash Taste Highlights and, you know, their main channel. And I'll see you next time.